Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review on the 2016 Honda Civic FC. The Honda Civic FC is actually a 10th generation Honda Civic. So today the owner is going to be coming on camera. He's going to be talking about the car a bit, telling us what has he done to the car, some modifications here and there, and also show us around. Alright, so here we have it. Hello. Hi guys. So this is Azrin. Uh, Azrin is a friend of mine and also the owner of this Civic that we're going to review. Yeah. So, thank you for coming, first of all. No worries. Alright, so uh, first things first. Uh, how long have you owned this car for and why did you decide to buy the Honda Civic instead of other cars? Uh, I owned the car since 2017 and the reason why I bought this car is because my friend asked me to buy a car. Okay. I tried to apply a loan together uh. but at the end he pulled out. Okay. So then after that I was looking at other cars and I don't know, like, I've been driving Honda last time, so I just drive back Honda. Ah, okay, okay. So, through all these three years of ownership, right, have you actually enjoyed the car? Right? Yeah, it's a good car. Um, no problems. Like, you know, any other car, people always complain of this problem, Correct. that problem. But, mm -hmm. like, any car, there's always bound to have problems. Like, but so far, for me, no. Like. That is true. Alright, so, can you just, uh, you know, bring us, have a look at the car, tell us can. what you did to it, then, you know, we'll, we'll check yeah. it out. Can, can, can. All right, so here we have it, guys. This is a um, grey color, right? They call it uh, yeah. some sort of grey. So grey color Civic FC. So as you guys can see, the car looks quite standard from the outside. La. I'm guessing you're going for the more clean look since there's no body kit or yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, the clean look. La. And then also, last time I have a lip, but I broke the lip in three hours. Uh, <laughs> three hours. La. <laughs> so okay, la, it's good. I'm not, I see you're not going for that Type R thing and you no, know, la. whatever that most people... The best, la. All right, but... You know, he said stock is still the best. That is true, but this car is not exactly stock, you know. Alright, we check it out, right? As you guys can see, there is a... a what do you call it? Red Sport TC 105 N wheels. So, what is the specs of these wheels? So, the wheel actually is a 17-inch uh, APJ offset 32. And... Currently, the tyres I'm using is a RS4 hand cook. La. RS4. So, mm. RS4, quite expensive. Very, very good performance. But yeah. also, what do you feel? You know, because this is your daily car, right? Your, yeah. your car that you drive to work and everything. So, running on these RS4s, what do you feel? Uh, for me, I feel it's okay. La. The grip is good. That kind of thing. Like, except raining, I just have to slow down. La. Like, you cannot just, you know, go over like 100. La. Mm, so, but for grip-wise, it's... Perfect lah. Grip wise is perfect lah for daily. It's just noisy a bit lah because it's a a lot of people use it for track, you know, correct, for correct, correct. Kind of stuff. But for me, it's okay lah. For you, it's okay lah. Not cheap lah, right? These tires, yeah. but okay lah. You get what you pay for. Okay, if you guys notice also, um, the brakes are actually aftermarket. So here we have a set of spoon, what monoblock or twin blocks? Ah, uh, it's a mono block. Mono block. Um, from my S two thousand. Um, the. Brake pad is using Endless Rotor, I'm using DBA T2 Oh, DBA T2 rotors, T3, okay, okay So these these are plug and play or do you have to modify them? Uh, to it's fit? plug and play um, You just have to use the bracket la, for the How say? The brake caliper Ah, uh, okay, okay, that's about it la. Yeah. So, for suspension wise, what are you running? Uh, suspension, I'm running on a BCV1 uh, Spring rate on 8k front 6k rear mainly because i feel the front needed more higher spring rate la. Mm, it's a bit too soft la. yeah too because soft. the standard civic is actually quite floaty uh, I've, yeah. I've tried a few right all right guys check it out so here we are This car is actually decently low, I would say, you know, for a daily driven car. But good thing is there is no body kit or whatsoever, so you're not going to scrape everywhere or break your body kit. Like the owner said, you know, he broke his front lip within three hours of buying it. Yep. So that's wasted money right there. Lah. Okay, for the rear, looks very stock. So I assume nothing has been done to it aside from this carbon fiber ducktail. Uh, yeah, there's a ducktail and then exhaust. Lah. So your exhaust is a Spoon N1 lah? Yeah, Spoon N1 Original right? Original from FD to R Right, what is the inlet and the outlet oh. if you can remember? The exhaust? Yeah, the muffler The muffler inlet is two and a half. Uh, outlet I'm not really sure lah mm, okay, okay. okay. FD to R kaki then Definitely you know lah You sure know lah Alright guys, so there you have it for the exterior Stock, nothing much here. It's a bit of that 
you know that very very clean look where you just go for wheels give it a nice drop change the brakes to fill it up i would say all very how do you call it very performance orientated mods lah all right so the interior as you guys can see we have a tire pressure monitoring system so is this wireless or like how bluetooth connected or what uh yeah this one is actually wireless inside there i want to say the the valve the system, yeah, the, whole uh, system, the valve including so this one tested in sepang really lah so if you want you can go and check it out it's called hackers so so far so good lah so far so good uh, so you know where you have a so flat everything so yeah. you don't have to just always go to the petrol station and check right yep you can every even though when you know you kena nail or what then there's a free warning to tell you like so mm. you can see when the thing drop there you know to go and check it out like. okay that's quite good that's quite good you guys should actually invest in one of these lah uh, you know, so you, in case, you know, you guys go out of station or anything, you guys will know. Alright, so as you guys can see here, we have a CAG OBD2 gauge. So these gauges nowadays are very popular because they are very quite affordable, right? Quite yeah. affordable. So you just plug it into the OBD2, then you can get yeah. your... So, okay, what, as far as I understand now, right? Mm. So the CAG, all these kind of OBD2 gauges, you plug it into the OBD2, is to read your ECU, correct? Yeah. Very much. So, let's say some cars, they don't have your, let's say, example, all time. So, if you don't have the all time input for ECU, means the reading then, is just really loud. Yeah, you can't read the. If your car don't have the sensor, then you can't read. But if you want, then you can put in a sensor as soon as the Oh, but you still run through the gauge. Yeah. Yep. Let's say if you use the sensor, so the gauge can still be used for that purpose. Lah. So, yeah. for your Civic, like what does it read and what doesn't it read? Uh, this one, it reads the turbo, water temp, uh, CVT temp only on the newer models. Or the facelift, is it? Uh, no, the new. How to say a new cat? Oh, all the newer, all the newer CAG mm -hmm. model. Okay, okay, okay. And then uh, you have your speed, your shift light, all that kind of yep. things. So that all works, right? All works, right? So it's quite a good thing to have if you know, as long as your car can read most of the essentials, which is like your all them, water them, all press or whatsoever. It's actually quite a good investment. But if not, then you guys like what the, what he said. You guys have to wire it up and use a sensor, lor. Yep. Then you guys can have your full function of the CAG meter, lah. CV got no oil press or temp. temp so you have to send wire it up lor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know for you civic owners out there, if you guys are planning on buying a CAG or any OBD type of gauge, do keep in mind these two things. You know, it's not gonna be displayed. You, you know, you just buy a sensor, plug it in, then you're good to go lah. Alright guys, we're gonna go check out the engine bay right now. So this car is not stock. It has been slightly modded like in the power department. Only in the stock outside lah. Stock, stock outside. outside. <laughs> A bit modded inside lah. Yeah. Alright, maybe you can just show us a bit. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, okay, intake wise, I already changed to Mishimoto. Mishimoto open port intake with a yeah. heat shield. And then in terms of bar, I'm running Cusco from FK8. So this is a Cusco FK Type R sway bar, I mean front strut bar. Yep. And this you have uh what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, pillow ball top mounts as well. So these pillow balls are from what? From BC Racing itself or what? Uh this one is from Foster. Oh it's a custom made one yeah, la. BC, oh. they got create one themselves but I decided because my car suspension set up in Foster so, so you just everything also through there lah. Uh, so like for like you know for the newer cars or you know to run camber or hmm. caster or tow or whatever, you gonna need adjustable arms, right? Uh yeah, you need okay for a front you can adjust camber using pillar ball. Uh, tow no problem also. The rear, when you adjust camber, you only can do a certain degree. And mm. also your tow. So you need to, you know, either buy, you know, like hard race, you know, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. So you have it lah now? Yeah. So what do you have? Uh, adjustable camber arms? And then I got the tow arm also. Tow arm also, that's yeah. for the rear lah, for the front only pillar ball top mounts lah. Okay, so since you have all these mods done to it, oh, by the way, I forgot to ask, is the exhaust stock? Downpipe. Uh, exhaust downpipe I already changed to two and a half in, two and a half out lah. But the rest of the system is all standard lah. Uh, yeah. Or all the way two and a half. All the way two and a half. All the way two and a half. So, so since you know if you guys really change your downpipe, you have to remap ma definitely. If not, you yeah. get a check engine light, correct? So I assume this car has already been remap. Yeah. So uh, Honda ta. Honda ta. So how much power is it making right now? Two hundred on wheel top is about thirty kilo. Oh, that's not bad lah. Not bad for the CVT. So any CVT issues lah? Are you running a cooler? Yep, there's a CVT cooler. Uh, oil running the Motis oil. Fully. CVT. 
Okay, performance and oil lah. Uh, engine oil also running Motis. The water also running Motis coolant lah. Everything Motis lah, this car. Motis coolant. Lah. Motis coolant. This guy is baller, man. Water <laughs> just... Yeah. Just leave it lah. Just leave it lah. Alright. Okay guys, so that's it for the walk around of the car. Um, thank you so much for showing us around yeah, the car. No so next, I'm going to drive your car. Right? Okay. I'm just going to drive it. Uh, that's how it feels like with the upgraded suspension, upgraded brakes, the RS4 tires and whatnot. Mm. So we'll see how the car feels like compared with the stock Civic, yeah, right? Yeah. And also for the power wise. So I'll let you guys know what I feel about the car. Just do a short review, maybe about five minutes kind of thing. Mm. Alright, so we're going to catch you guys in the car. Yo guys, we're in the car right now, we're going to go for a drive, so we're just going to, you know, drive it for a bit lah, then see how the car feels like and everything. If you guys remembered in my first video, right, in the Thailand vlog video, when we were doing a drag race in uh, Songkla Speedway, we were actually driving, I mean, I was actually driving this exact Civic, alright, so uh, I haven't actually driven this car on the road before. Uh, aside from that, that time when it was at the drag strip So don't really know how this car feels like on normal roads So we're going to check it out right now um, Let's see how it feels So first of all right uh, This car is running a, a full 2.5 inch exhaust from the downpipe onwards And it is running a spoon N1 rear muffler It's actually quite droney <laughs> I expected it to be a, a bit, be a bit quiet uh, But it's actually quite droney can you guys hear that? All the way. Quite droney. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so this car is running on BC Racing coilovers. Feels quite firm. Definitely a lot firmer than the standard Civic. But then again, right, these Civic FCs, uh, when they're running on stock suspension, right, it tends to be it tends to feel very floaty in a sense where it's, it feels very unstable and also very floaty like what I said because there was once I sat in the back seat of my friend's Civic FC right all the way from KL to Kedah it was so bumpy it was so bumpy you know that actually we were like hey can we swap you know like we, we took turns to sit in the back because it was so bumpy oh the brakes got a bit of noise to it uh, it's a four port spoon caliper running high temp pads and aftermarket DBA rotors, so you can hear that that uh, you know that squeak of the you know that you would normally get from the what do you call it high performance brake pads. All right, so this video is going to be quite short lah. We're not going to take too long because the owner has got to work tomorrow. All right, so we are in D right now. Full throttle. Drop gear. quite fast <laughs> uh, the tires are very noisy <laughs> the RS force being a high performance uh, UHP tire right they are actually quite noisy you can actually hear it because the radio is off now it's quiet right aside from the exhaust you can also hear the tires they are quite loud you can hear that um, how do you say that that sound where you hear when your wheel bearing is broken that whining noise you do actually hear it so some people might think like oh is your wheel bearing broken no it's not it's the tires right um, the brakes were strong now we were doing quite fast brakes feel nice okay we, just now we were in D right we're gonna put into sport mode so this car is running a 7 speed CVT 7 speed lah right 7 in 1 lah okay CVT um, it is running a CVT cooler as well so like we mentioned just now Honda Ta tune 200 wheel horsepower 30 kilos of torque which is about roughly 300 nm on wheel um, it's actually not bad, you know, I mean a lot better compared with stock obviously. Alright, we put it to S, full throttle, sport mode, we're not going to touch the pedal shifters like, because it's a CVT anyway. We have a very nice bend coming up, oh the brake so grabby, so strong. Alright, let's enter this corner, mid corner the car feels nice no understeer no oversteer very neutral and full throttle out oh you can feel a bit of a wheel spin there 
traction control is kicking in, but very stable. Oh, the tire noise is so loud. It feels so much nicer to drive, you know, compared with the how to say, compared with the stock Civic suspension because it feels very it feels very firm, but not too firm in a bad way where you feel like the interior is going to fall apart where the car is rattling everywhere it's firm but it's a nice kind of firm so the car is low uh, it's decently low but thank god this car hasn't been fitted with a body kit uh, you know no side skirt no front lip whatever just a carbon fiber ducktail it's comfortable the front feels nice i mean i really like the um, the interior of the civic like, because you know you have this long center console it makes you feel like you are sitting a lot lower than you actually are it has that very that wrap around feeling that you get you know if it makes it feels it makes it feel very sporty la. like uh, with these kind of cars right you always have to remember that it's a cvt right so try not to put as so much power on it because the more power you know the cvt is actually not a very strong gearbox so it can't withstand so much of power but then again i've seen guys in thailand running 350 wheel horsepower with a turbo upgrade and also about close to 400 newton meters of torque but then again obviously they have e85 over there lah, which is um 85 percent ethanol right so that way you can bump the power up a lot more so far i've actually asked a few of them like have you had any issues with the car or not like due to the cvt they said as far you know as far as they've been driving it with that tune with the 300 horsepower there's no issues but then again don't be stupid about it uh, don't think like oh i have 300 horsepower 350 horsepower i'm just gonna launch it every single time Yes, definitely the CVT will blow up. It will blow up and that's not a cheap upgrade, you know. Or if you guys blow your CVT, you guys want to swap to a 6 speed manual gearbox from the SI, that would be a cool thing to do. Uh, although I'm not too sure who can get it done and how easy is it to be done. But you know, it would be cool seeing a 6 speed swap uh, Civic FC since here in Malaysia, we don't have it. The only option we have is a CVT. Yeah, so anyhow, just, you know, if you guys decide to tune your car, you guys decide to put loads of power on it be mindful think about the reliability as well because this car actually 200 horsepower for the setup it's not exactly a lot it's decent a lot better than standard for sure but due to reliability sake you know we don't want to bump the, the owner doesn't want to bump the power up too high lah because drives it to work you know this car has been to uh, thailand hajai multiple times with no issues you know it, it just feels like a stock standard civic fc Sitting inside, it feels very normal, aside from the fact that it's a lot firmer and the brakes are a lot better, I tell you. The brakes are a lot better. It's so nice, but it takes I'm getting used to, like from, uh, you know, coming to a, coming from a standard, you know, standard brakes, you know, if you upgrade to these four ports, you do, you do have to get used to it because as soon as you tap on it, you see, it actually bites really hard. But you know, like the owner said, like, he does some occasional track driving on Sepang, your toge once in a while, so... It's good that he also went the extra step, you know, uh, hard race, rear camber arm, rear toe arm, so you can dial in the, the suspension setting a lot more than you can, you know, than you can without having to... How do you call it? No, sorry, I mean, instead of, you know, being able to do just your very, very basic alignment setup, because these cars are standard from factory, you cannot actually camber the rear unless you have a adjustable rear camber arm, right? So, you know, if you want to bring it on track, you want to bring it on a toge, definitely you want to dial in as precise as possible to your liking. So you can, how do you call it? You can actually have the car to handle as well as you want it to. Lah. So, all right, guys. Um, what do you, call you know, we're going to end the video right here. Um, it's actually a very short review. Lah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, overall it's a nice car my, my final words on the car I feel overall it's a nice car very comfortable the power is decent not anything crazy it handles well I can live with the you know with this setup on a day to day basis no issues it doesn't feel too firm the brakes are very nice which I really really like actually I would really appreciate in a car like this because the standard brakes are honestly to me quite quite bad lah so yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I would like to thank the owner for coming out and letting me drive his car. I mean, he is a friend of mine. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know what other cars would you guys like to see. I'll try to get it on the channel. And of course, last but not least, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.